Irish Not Much Fans, going to do a Stephen King movie here by request. This one is called Maximum Overdrive, 1986. Let's watch. On June 19, 1987, at 9.47 a.m., the Earth passed in the extraordinary diffuse tail of Rias M, a rogue comet. According to astronomical calculations, the planet would remain in the tail of the comet for the next eight days, five hours, 39 minutes, and 23 seconds. Something appears to be messed up in the marquee at the bank. Local drawbridge is operating by itself. Which causes immediate problems with the cars on the bridge because there was no warning. Here's the game room at the uh, local restaurant. Problems are going there with the electronics too. Gas pumps are causing people problems, too. Even electric carving knives seem to have a mind of their own. There's an idiot rest of this. Remember the guy in the arcade game room? Even your friendly ballpark soda machine is acting up. Can't trust the local steamroller either. Here's Curtis and his newlywed, Connie. That's Lisa Simpson, the actress Yeardley Smith. Operating by themselves or under the direction of some agency we don't understand are going on a homicidal rampage. It doesn't take long for the streets and homes to be littered with uh, bodies. Add one more. Well, Emilio Estevez and a group of people are stuck in the Dixie Boy truck stop. All the semi trucks are literally circling. Curtis and Connie get into an accident. Even though machines are taking over the world, it doesn't stop uh, Billy and uh, Brett, that's the actress Laura Harrington, from coupling up. Billy has a plan. Now it's an island about, uh, about six miles off the coast, and there aren't any motor vehicles allowed in the place. None whatsoever. None? Mm -hmm. So Billy and Curtis are heading out on a rescue you mission. You ready? Let's do it. Trucks are still circling. At one point, they're crawling through a tunnel. Which is a sewer, by the way. Then where are they? Anyway, I believe they were going after Deke. He's the boy that was at the uh, baseball park and was riding around on the bike. They got him. He does appear to be tired of those guys being inside the diner. Now they got guns. The owner of the diner had some big weaponry of his own. Someone figures out that the vehicles are now using Morse code with their beeps. To help protect themselves, they decide to play ball and fill them up. Of them. 
Sometimes they all sneak through those tunnels and end up across the street. Good timing because the trucks decided to take them out. Eventually the entire place blew up. This guy stopped to pull a ring off of a dead lady's finger. Bad idea. Our heroes hop a sailboat and head for an island. A few days after, a large UFO was destroyed in space by a Russian, quote, weather satellite. Okay, let's talk about Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive. Stephen King not only wrote this book, he also directed the movie. He has a small role in it in the very beginning. Uh, he's the one who's uh, trying to go to the uh, ATM machine, and the machine calls him an asshole. Um, this is a movie that uh, I saw when I was a kid. I had it taped on a beta tape. And I'll be totally honest with you, I never really cared for it all that much, and I can say the same today. After I haven't seen it in a very long time, but I always remembered not liking it all that well, and I never really went back to revisit it much because of that. And now I know why, because I still don't really care for this movie. I think what bothers me the most is that there's just too many inconsistencies in it. For one thing, I mean, we have these trucks and all these other mechanical devices that are going crazy, having a mind of their own, and killing people, yet there are also... Uh, like Curtis and his wife, played by uh, the chick Yeardley Smith, who plays Lisa Simpson on The Simpsons, voices anyway, um, they're riding around in their car being chased by a truck. Why it not that car uh, going crazy as well? And I mean, there's just so many, there's just too many electronics in the world, and not all of it is going crazy, just some of it. So I don't know, I just don't like the inconsistency there. I uh, just thought that was a little strange. So, but anyway, um, the film itself, uh, other than that, um, I mean, there's a few gore scenes, not a lot. Apparently, I was uh, reminded of recently there is a uh, kid whose head got squished. I'm guessing it's that steamroller scene at the beginning. Uh, we didn't see the kid get squished. We didn't get his head see his head completely crushed though. But apparently there is there was a scene shot uh, that was done with that, which has never seen the light of day. We're not sure why. Um, the film, this movie here, has been released uh, multiple DVDs. It's not reached a Blu-ray in this country yet. However, it does have a PAL Blu-ray that's available for purchase overseas if you're really interested. Now, I do know this movie does have a nice following. There are fans of this movie who really, really like it a lot. And uh, maybe you can tell me why I'm wrong and uh, that it is good. I just I just didn't really care for it. I'd like, I do like Emilio Estevez. I always liked him. Instantly, the guy in there who played uh, Brad, I think was his name, Brad? Brad, no, Brad. Uh, Leon Rippey. Uh, he's the guy at the end, near the end of the movie who got crushed by that uh, toy semi truck um, when he stole the girl's diamond ring. Um, he played Bob Olinger, who gets shot by Billy the Kid in the movie Young Guns 2, which featured Emilio Estevez, of course, as Billy the Kid. So they worked together a couple of times. So anyway, just a little tidbit there. Anyway, check this movie out if you're interested. Maximum Overdrive, I'm guessing pretty much everybody who is watching this review has seen this movie already. Let me know what you think about it and tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I should like this movie because I just didn't care for it much. So watch it. Bye.